What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 video. So in this video I'm going to be showing you guys uh, PS4 AIO, which is a tool uh, that I basically made for uh, 1.76 PS4s. It's designed to be an all-in-one kind of tool for PS4s, so it's pretty much uh, got every, every tool I've made, every separate tool that I've made for 1.76 PS4s, and it's kind of combined them into one, plus I've added some new stuff that I've made for it as well. Uh, and some improvements on certain things so yeah I'm just gonna go over that now I was gonna do like one video on this like one overview but I can't record like the recording goes like above 20 minutes or like 30 minutes in some cases so I'm splitting these into separate videos so in this video I'm gonna be going over the console tools in the next video I'll go I will go over the peak poke tool um, because you know there's a lot of stuff in here as well that's worth one whole video on um, and then of course advanced warfare and ghost mod tools as well which I'll go over uh, in the last video so for this video I'm going to show you guys um, the console tools and there will be a link in the description to where you can go ahead and download this tool um, on NGU probably so go ahead and click that link if you want to go ahead and download it and once again this is for 1.76 PS4s. The PS4 needs to be on 1.76 firmware and the tool is designed to be used with of course the WebKit Playground. So anyway first first thing first things first we've got the uh, payload injector. So the payload injector basically there is a bunch of preset payloads in here that you can go ahead and inject. So you've got uh, the CE fix. So if you can't start games, you can inject this payload and it'll let you start games. Uh, the FTP plus uh, fully enabled debug settings, uh, fully enabled debug settings on its own, and the web browser patch. Now, if you want to add more payloads to this list, uh, there's these are all inside a folder called payloads in the install directory of the program. So you can just add more payloads in there and they'll appear in this drop down list. Um, you can also select a custom payload, so if you have a payload that you want to go ahead and inject, in fact I've got fully enabled debug settings right here, so I could just drag that in and inject it just like that, um, or I could select one of these. Um, there's also change IP payload, now if you select that, that is for uh, payloads where you normally have to change the IP address at the bottom of the file. Uh, so a lot of payloads, you actually have to enter your own PS4's IP address at the bottom of the payload inside a hex editor. Uh, whereas checking this box will basically do that for you. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, all you really need to do is make sure you have your PlayStation 4's IP address entered in the bottom left hand corner. And of course, on the WebKit Playground, you want to make sure that you have the code execution started so that it's waiting for payload and then you can go ahead and uh, inject the payload. So let's go ahead and do that, we'll full screen this and we will go ahead and inject this payload and there we go, executing. So that's it, injected the FTP plus fully enabled debug settings. Uh, the other options we have in here, we've got a mod menu injector, so this allows you to inject the GTA 5 Azura menu and Far Cry menu by too much for you. Uh, he made those menus, really, really good mod menus. You can go ahead and inject them using the same code execution feature in the WebKit Playground. You just select the menu you want and then you inject. Uh, also with the payload injector, you have the option to uh, inject an ELF payload as well as a bin payload. But if you're going to use the ELF payload, then of course you need to use the ELF loader in the WebKit Playground, not the code execution uh, for ELF payloads. So that is basically uh, the injectors. Uh, also, we've got a few other things in here. So uh, the package merging utility. So this allows you to merge multiple package files into one. So I've got two package files here. So this is Advanced Warfare uh, 1.23 update, which comes in two parts. And you can't just install each part uh, in the package manager inside the debug settings. You can only, you can only install one part. So if you have two parts like this, they will just give you an error if you try and install, say, part 0 or part 1. It will just give you an error because they're just, you know, files that have been cut in half pretty much. Um, so you need to actually merge them into one file in order for it to successfully install inside the package installer in the debug settings. 
So it's the same with games as well. Games will come in like 10 different parts, 10 different package files um, that you have to go ahead and merge into one package file in order to install. So what I can do here is I can just take these two parts, I can drag them into the package merging utility and give it an output path. So I'll just go into this directory here and choose that as my output path. And then all I have to do is click start and it's going to start merging that into one file. So there you go, you can see saying part zero. And that was a, um, a four gig and a two gig part. So that's going to be around about six gigs, around about six and a half gigabytes. So just wait for this. This is on an SSD, so it should be quite fast. There we go, it's on part two, two already. Uh, if you're doing this on a hard drive, it will take a long time. So you might think that it's frozen. It's very unlikely it's actually frozen. It's probably just taking a long time because you're on a on a hard drive. Uh, if you're on an SSD, it, it goes quite quickly. There you go. So that's done. And we've got our 6.5 gigabyte file, which are, which are our two parts combined into one, which we could then install this inside the package manager. So there you go. That is the package uh, utility. You can right click and remove a file or clear all files from uh, the list and just go ahead and add them. There's, I've added some kind, some error checking in here to make sure that, you know, the packages that you're adding are, you know, for the same game and stuff like that. But I'm not guaranteeing that um, it's completely idiot proof. So, you know, just obviously make sure you're, you're adding the right packages and in the right order and stuff but yeah that is basically the package merging utility and also we've got an FTP browser so I loaded that FTP plus debug settings in so I could use these so if I go ahead and connect it will basically just give you a little FTP client um, there's a little FTP client in here that uh, allows you to go ahead and just view the files that are on your uh, that are on your PS4's hard drive so you can view files, you can go into directories, you can back out of directories. You can, uh, of course, right click, you can import, export. So import files, export files, delete a file from the hard drive. And you can even just double click a file, uh, which will open it in, you know, whatever the default program is for that file type. It will go ahead and open it in that program. Um, so, uh, and you can, of course, edit stuff, save it and close it and that will apply back and transfer it back over to the uh, to the PS4 so if I double click it again you'll see that it has applied that change so there you go uh, just pretty basic FTP client so that you don't have to download a separate FTP client if you're just wanting to view a certain file or extract a couple of files then you can go ahead and use this um, also, we've got our UI editor. So again, this uses FTP. It grabs all of the files from, or all of the image files, all of your home screen images from the PS4. And you can basically swap them out for different images. So if I take, say, this image, and I can just drag that to my desktop. And then if I wanted to replace an image on here with an image from my computer, then I could just select, say, this image and replace it with this one by just dragging it on top. And there we go, it's now changed to this image. And you can do that with any PNG file that you have on your computer. Um, it will automatically resize it to the right uh, dimensions, the right pixels. So I think it's something like 500 by 500. So it'll do that automatically for you as well. And then once you're happy and you want to apply changes, uh, you can just click apply changes and it'll upload those images back to the PS4, PS4's hard drive. And then you just reboot the, com uh, reboot the console and your home screen images will be changed to whatever you set them as. Simple as that. Uh, you can also back up the images, which I recommend doing before changing any, so that if you ever want to change them back, you can just go ahead and, uh, and uh, you know, use those back, use the backup that you created. So yeah. That is the UI editor, and that is basically everything for um, the console tools section of the PS4 AIO. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for uh, the next part, which is going to be on the peak poke tool, um, which should be pretty good because, I mean, as far as I'm aware, as far as I'm aware, the only peak poke tool that I've seen for um, that's been released for PS4 
1.76 is the PS4 Me one, um, which is good that somebody released one uh, so earlier on, so early on, but it's it's a bit janky. Um, so this should be hopefully a, a good improvement on that. Uh, so stay tuned for that in the next video. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Remember the download link to the tools in the description and I will see you guys in the next video.